Hey everybody, uh, hopefully this will be a very quick uh, tutorial on how to do notifications for your for your app. Uh, notifications can be kind of confusing, um, but hopefully we can uh, work through that um, and get you some good push notifications and a way for your user to view all of those notifications and then clear them. Um, and that can be kind of tricky to do, uh, especially when we are looking at some of the list filtering and thing like things like that. But uh, hopefully we'll get that straightened out and you'll be able to add that to your app. Um, you'll notice that this is just the testing app that we've been using. Um, I've got a, a home screen here. Uh, on the home screen, I've got a list of users, a list of recipes, an add recipe button that takes me to this add recipe screen. Uh, I've just got one property for that recipe, uh, and this button both creates the recipe and then links back to the home screen. Um, I've also added a notification screen. Um, there's nothing on it yet because this is the primary one that we'll be working on. Um, but the, that, that screen is there. This is the screen that the user will be taken to when they tap on a notification. Um, I've got a recipe summary here um, that we did in the last one, you know, where we page through uh, steps of a, of a recipe. Um, and then I've got, a, the, of course, the profile screen where we did the follow and unfollow there. Um, I've got both of those videos already up. Um, and I've got two users added. Uh, for us to kind of interact with and, and toy with with the notifications and um, the first thing that I want to do um, to add notifications is just add a collection called notifications and it's usually good practice uh, to anytime users are sharing something whether or you know sending uh, something to or from each other uh, whether that's you know intentionally or not it's good for them to for you to have a collection for them to share. So like messages, notifications, things like that uh, typically require their own collection. So I'm going to add that. Uh, the name, this can be like literally anything and you can even leave this blank basically. Um, I'm going to add a property here, a uh, relationship to users. Um, and we're going to be making this the, the triggering user. Uh, so we want them to be able to trigger multiple notifications because obviously they, they'll be adding multiple recipes, um, but the notification needs to belong to only one user. So we'll choose this one. Click done. And it's always good to name um, uh, a property what it does rather than just leave it at users because uh, you can get very easily uh, confused. Um, if you don't name them properly. So naming conventions are important. Uh, triggering user, we're going to just name it what it does. And then this one, add property, we're going to add a relationship to the, to the recipes. Um, and a recipe can have multiple notifications. Um, for instance, if we wanted our user, if they updated the recipe, maybe we uh, would want our followers to know that we've updated it or um, something along those lines. So we're going to choose this one. Um, but your use case may vary, so don't take this, you know, as as law. Uh, and I'm just going to leave it as recipe because that's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, um, so we've got our notifications collection built there. Um, maybe I, maybe I'd add something like content. Let's let's add, or or maybe this text field here is is the content. Okay. Um, you could do that as well. Like if you're sending an update from your page or something like that, um, or a message to your to all of your followers, that would be a good way to do that. Um, and I'm going to add one field to the users field, and that is this last notify clear. Um, and this is just a text um, or a date and time uh, format. Let me just re-add it so that uh, you can see see that. Um, so this is going to be a date and time property, and we're going to call it last notify clear, um, because when when the user uh, goes to this screen here, we only want it to show them the notifications um, after the only show them the notifications that have occurred after they've cleared this, cleared their notifications out. Um, so we need two dates to compare that to. One is the created date of the notification. And the second one is going to be the user's uh, last notification clear. Um, and that'll make sense more in a second. So we'll click Save there. 
Uh, now I'm going to add a list to this notification screen. We'll just use a simple list here. Um, and this is going to be a list of notifications. Um, and we'll filter this in just a second. Uh, this is the most confusing part of the whole thing, in my opinion. Um, but first, let's build out this functionality here to actually s create the notification and send it. Um, this button here, Add Recipe, links to this screen, Add Recipe. Um, and then this Create Recipe button, we're going to add two things for it to do in addition to what it does by default. So by default, it creates the recipe and it links back to the home screen. Uh, but we're going to add another action, um, a, a trigger notification. Um, and the recipient is going to be the logged in users followers all. Because uh, we want it to send that notification to all of the, the logged in users followers. Okay, And you can filter this uh, if you want to. So for instance, if you wanted to have... Uh, you know, uh, the users subscribe to each other. Maybe they're following, uh, but but they want to. You want to subscribe to certain content that they put out. Um, you can do that with a true false field in in their user record, and then filter based off of of true or false fields, which is pretty cool. Um, the title of the notification can be anything, but I'm just going to be, you know, say something like new recipe from, um, and then the logged in users like full name or their username or something and then the body maybe this is just like the new recipes name um, we'll just leave that and then the screen is going to be the notification screen because we want it when the user taps on that notification we want it to take them directly here so that they can then tap on that notification um, to go to wherever they need to go um, but this can this can be anything. So maybe I wanted it to take them directly to the recipe that was added. You can do that. That's totally that's totally doable. Um, but I'm just gonna, for the sake of the demonstration, I'm gonna link it to notifications here. Um, and now I'm gonna add another action that creates the notification. Now that seems kind of backwards. Um, and really, you can put this one above the trigger notification. But I do this just so that you know that. It doesn't, these two are not connected in any way. Um, this is us on the user side of things, and this is trigger notification on the back end. Um, so it's going to create a new notification. The content can be like whatever they want. Maybe this is like the, you know, the, the new recipe's name or something like that. The triggering user uh, is going to be the logged in user. And the recipe is going to be the new recipe. Um, and this data will get passed to this screen, as we'll see in just a second. So we'll click Done there. And now that we've got that piece uh, done, what we'll need to do is let's go ahead and um, we will add a clear button before we get into list filtering here. Um, and you can kind of add this wherever you want, really, but um, we want them to be able to clear out all of these notifications in this list. Um, and maybe let's make this just a text button, and let's make it like red or like orange or something. There we go. And the action for this button is going to be to update the logged in user's last notified clear, which is, remember that date. And we want it to be the date that they push that button, that clear button. Um, so it's going to be the current time. So date and time, current time. Um, and once it updates that, uh, we can then use that date to filter this list. Uh, and you'll see, uh, we'll look at that now. Um, so under this list, uh, this, is, this is a list of notifications. Um, and this is where it gets very confusing. Hopefully I won't screw this up. Um, so it is all notifications, but we're going to add a filter the, to this that says, I want it to be the triggering users followers all that contains the logged in user. Okay. So I'm asking for only the, whoever the triggering user is of that notification. I want you to 
first find their followers, get all of them, and then I want you to see if his followers contains the logged in user. And if it does, I want you to show that notification here. Um, and uh, so that's kind of how we're going to filter this. Uh, and then I'm going to add another filter here um, that says I only want the notifications that were created after the user cleared their notifications. So only the created date, I want the I only want the notifications where the created date of that notification is after the logged in user's last notify clear. Okay, um, and that's pretty much how you filter that list. Um, again, this can be anything. I've just got because it's a list of notifications. I've just got the 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 recipe there, um, but you can add basically whatever you want to this list. Um, obviously, you need to use a custom list in order to add more things to it, but the photo could be, you know, the recipe photo or, or whatever. Um, so that's, that's kind of how that works. Um, uh, the notifications function works with many different scenarios. This is just one, just one scenario of how to use notifications. Um, you could also just do this like just with the recipe itself. So maybe you want to filter it based off of just, you know, the recipe, like when the recipe is created, um, send, you know, a notification and then when they click on it, it takes them to this. And maybe this is just a list of recipes that's filtered like this. Um, you know, current recipe user followers contains the logged in user, uh, you know, and the recipes created date is after the logged in users last notification to clear. Um, you can do it that way. Uh, it doesn't have to use notifications, but this is just good practice um, for doing other things. Um, so, uh, and it helps to just kind of uh, differentiate it from from other things, um, and it and it provides more scalability and functionality uh, later on when you're developing your app. Um, because lots of different, maybe maybe this notifications property, you know, collection has lots of different properties. Uh, you know, maybe one is a recipe. Maybe one of them is a, you know, uh, you know, an event. Maybe one of them is a shopping list. You know, there's all types of different things. Um, whereas if you just use just the recipes here, um, like a list of recipes built out in the same way, that's all you're going to be able to see. Um, there's no scalability there with that. You have to re, you know, go back in and kind of change things around if you wanted to make changes, or you have to add screens. Um, so this just kind of eliminates all of that. All right. So now that I'm through that spiel, sorry. Uh, we there's two things that we need to do before we test this, and the first thing is um, what we want to do is. Uh, we want to add a notification icon here so that we can actually get to this notification screen. So I'm going to just turn on the left icon here and we'll search for something like notify notification and this is going to link to the notification screen. Click done. And the last thing that we need to do is because we've got just two test users who have never hit this button before, uh, we'll need to add we'll need to give them both a last notify clear, um, a last notify clear date. Um, so let's just go into our two records here. And I think, yeah, see, this, this field is empty. So that list is not going to appear because we don't have a date to compare it to. So let's just go in here and add an, a last notified clear. Um, we'll make it, yeah, like yesterday, just so that we can make sure and we'll add another one for this other guy who doesn't have one just for grins and giggles all right so now we've got dates set for those two um, ideally that date would be set at sign up so when the user signs up over here um, that date uh, we would just update the user here um, we would just update their last notify clear to be um, the current date and time so that that field is already filled. Um, 
so that after they sign in, if they immediately get a notification without ever having to hit this button, uh, their list will still appear. Okay, all right, so those are the last two things that we need to do. So let's go into preview, um, and this is going to get kind of weird because we'll have to switch uh, accounts here to, to kind of view it. Um, let's go... This is my actual email. And... Okay, so I've got two uh, just kind of recipes that I've already added here. Um, so let's add a recipe, and we'll just call it uh, Grimy Pancakes. We'll create the recipe. So on the back end, it has you know, supposedly sent the trigger notification. It's created a notification record. Um, and now let's log out and log back in as this guy and see if we can see this Grimy Pancakes in the notifications. So let's log out. We'll sign in as somebody else. All right, and then we'll click on this notifications icon, and there's Grimy Pancakes um, that we've been notified about. Um, and only the people who are following uh, that PFORD Media account will be able to see this um, in their notifications. Uh, so the final test here is to just clear this, and hopefully this will disappear. So we're going to clear it, and it does. Um, so that's a very long way to show you how to do notifications, but hopefully that was helpful for you. And as always, if I can help in any, in any way, um, you can comment, uh, subscribe, and uh, I'll be happy to help uh, as best I can.